looks like your credits went through just fine. Fantastic. Now, where was I? Hmm, right, right. You were asking about the Mercs. Nox Solaris. Well, friend, you have come to the right man. Been their humble street pharmacist since just after they got together. Some of my best clients, by the way. But more importantly for you, they're the best there is at what they do. I mean, what a group. Leaders of bona fide Atlantean Voyager. That's right, Atlantean. Then there's the spooky techno wizard cyborg genius. Finally, a mystic smithy giant. Twelve feet tall if he's an inch. Not to mention the mountain of a spirit bear he calls brother. Now, I can get word to him if you're looking to hire, mister. No problem there. Just let old Blitz give you two tiny tips for your health. First, don't get on their bad side. Make sure you have payment ready to go, and don't try to pull any bullshit, or you're worse than dead. And second, don't piss off that fucking bear. Finally, finally, there you are. <laughs> the Nexus had just enough power to feel one more try. The last step. The Megaverse knows my Atlantean people as heroes, but I, a shadow of chaos has taken root in me. They try to bind it. They try to bury it. But when I finally called out to it, to you, from across the void, you answered. I am ready. Welcome, traveler. To the Black Shore. Your shame breaches a mother's heart, even beyond the veil, little brother. My sister saw her mocked her as the darkness closed in. She giggled and synthesized honey sweet tones while leaning close to softly breathe her venom into my ear. And so, the judgment passed and tourniquets in place. My family commanded the automated surgical bots to neatly slice both arms and legs from my torso. The harsh lights overhead swam and dimmed before my eyes as flesh and bone were replaced with cold, unfeeling metal to cripple my connection to the arcane. No, my family lies far behind my path. And I follow a new teacher as she whispers from the darkness ahead. Her voice haunts me with promises of forbidden knowledge and wondrous precious beyond compare. Each step brings me closer to my prize, closer to my revenge, closer to her. as keenly as your ancient ones do. It is almost here. E is almost home. And with him 
comes the end for our proud and noble Vana Country Month, along with the rest of the souls on this world. As his foul shadow falls upon us all, we alone stand for those who cannot. <sighs> so rise, son of Aku. Our ancestors smile upon us this night as they call us home. Come and let us earn our place amongst the stars above. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to the 12th episode of the Prism of Ketterfall campaign in the Rifts from Palladium Books setting. Appreciate you joining us. Today we're picking up with our group, Akama and Ymir, who have just exited out of a perilous situation in a quasi-demeanic demonic dimension um, and have escaped with their lives relatively unscathed um, back out to the safety of the world above. Um, they now find themselves after dark in a, a graveyard like area in the Here we go. In the um, presence of several beings that they have encountered several times before and are starting to build some friendship with. Um, both seem relatively powerful, one more so than the other. Um, they've asc asc ascended a staircase and gone through the outer gates, uh, coming into this... Uh, coming into this area just outside of a large luminous chapel. Um, they have noticed that the entire area radiates uh, with a strong uh, kind of quasi-holy uh, aura and power. And um, as they are both magically sensitive, they're, they're picking this up uh, quite strongly. Um, this entire area seems to be populated with a vast assortment of extremely powerful beings um, and uh, this particular corner uh, of the overall uh, grounds seems no different um, as we join the heroes there in the company of Pilgrim a strange being who seems capable of absorbing uh, different energies and powers into herself, uh, and who also seems to change as she does so, as well as her companion, Harmony, uh, a hunter of the supernatural uh, and apparent wielder of several uh, magical and technological artifacts which give her an edge over her opponents. Um, okay. 
as as our heroes round the corner and come into full view of the chapel, the cathedral here, um, they notice that Pilgrim and Harmony are standing about 10 feet up ahead and have uh, stopped proceeding forward as they uh, have a few uh, hushed, whispered words with each other, um, with their backs turned uh, to our players. Um, as this is happening, we'll go ahead and pick up and uh, let our players uh, decide where our story goes next. So uh, in the spirit of that, thank you guys for being here. And uh, let's start with Akama. What would you like to be doing as you're following up behind these two? Um, taking a look around at least, see what's uh what's in the area. I mean, I see what I see here, but uh, what else is around me? Can I just uh, as I'm slowly peering, I'm looking around. Absolutely. As you're looking around, you notice that there are several other structures. Um, that are pretty dilapidated and seem fairly kind of run down in the area. But for the most part, this block of structures seems very well maintained. Um, it seems like a lot of care has been taken to preserve uh, the, the stonework um, and the kind of glory of this particular area. Um, and you notice that while there is some uh, signs of, of use... For the most part, you would guess that not a lot of the pilgrims that you've seen uh, here uh, at the at the House of the Saints complex, um, you would guess that not a lot of foot traffic comes through this area. Um, although it does seem as though this is all uh, this is all completely open. You don't get the sense that this is a restricted area or a place that people are kind of forbidden from coming. More that it's just kind of on the outer edge and not really noticed as much. And maybe used more by the inhabitants of the facility than being part of the kind of tourist trap vibe that you're getting from the rest of it. Um, there don't seem to be any other individuals around. Uh, but you do hear a strange kind of metal almost like a chiming, not quite bells, but maybe wind chimes, uh, ringing from somewhere off in the distance beyond uh, the cathedral itself. Um, you notice that beyond that structure ahead of you, it looks like uh, the grounds kind of open up into more of a kind of uh, open field kind of situation, uh, and the actual structures stop. Um so this kind of looks like maybe the edge of this this side of the compound, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, as I'm stumbling along and uh, walking around, taking a nice big scenery of what, what's uh, around me, um, I'll go ahead and, like, say, so, uh... I know we're heading toward this cathedral and all, but uh, shouldn't be backtrack for Ren, or should he, is he on the way? Do you guys know? You spoke to him. Um, as you say this, Harmony uh, looks back over her shoulder at you, and they kind of stop their conversation. Um, she says, uh, "We haven't checked in on your friend." Uh, since we saw him earlier in your company, um, she says, is he missing? Oh, no, 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 no. He is not missing, but he is the, how you say it? Huh? Balls deep in some books and some, uh, some research. Okay. So, uh, he's, he hasn't been around for a while. He's, uh, been cooped up, taking care of business. So, um, I feel like we should at least let him know what's going on or actually what time it is because it's almost that time no uh she she just kind of looks at you plainly and says um if you wish to go and re go and retrieve him feel free 
Um, she says, but the event is upon us. We must enter and participate while the moment uh, is at hand. Um, and she turns and slowly begins kind of walking forward again with Pilgrim. I look at Ymir and I say, what do you think? Well, I'll go, I'll do whatever you want to do. Ymir is sort of quietly contemplating to himself uh, as he walks forward, um, taking in the grand sight before him. But given the circumstances they were just dealing with last time, he's still kind of bleeding off that tension and uh, anxiety and everything that he was dealing with uh with all the blood magic and necromancy, but feeling the aura of this place, his walk becomes slow and he squats down and taps Wotek twice, hearing a uh, comma up ahead and goes, I think we should participate with these two. Ren will be just fine, I'm sure, given his extra security that we saw last time I'm sure it's better to leave the techno or the techno master to his business and, but he's still kind of lost in his own uh, go ahead I'm sorry <laughs> oh you're good I, uh, I go ahead and I say Speaking about the other time, what the hell was that? I was uh, just staring at this long barrel shotgun in my face, and then now we went through some tunnels and stuff. Uh, why? why? I don't even know why we're here. I know why we're here, but I don't know how we got here. Obviously, that lurker had some other plans for us. It was better that we await. And even though things could have went rather um, poorly back there, I'm thankful that we're out. Akama nods and uh, kind of shakes his body like a kind of like a little shiver. And then uh, shakes his face and then gives it a nice slap back two handed on each cheek trying to wake himself up. He's like, all right, I guess we off then. And I start following with behind uh, Harmony and Pilgrim. Um, Akama, give me a actually both of you give me a perception check if you would. I'll give you more than a perception check. Oh. I'll give you a perception check with a bonus. Oh. Pulling uh, out the big gun. How you I like see. that? Good God. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> big talk. <laughs> Not 15. Not bad. Not bad. There it is. Still don't know why that's plus zero, but I'll take it. D20. Really? Good God. Natural one? Yeah. Bro. Bro. It'll I'm get better. I'm telling you. It'll I'm telling you. No, I'm telling you, Odin. That's why I've talked about for the last week and a half with the stat line that I've wanted to throw up because there's certain things here that just don't make any sense. I get you. I mean, it doesn't really matter. A, na a natural one, it fails no matter what. Even if I you know, have like a plus to I get you. I get you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I feel I'm your. Saying. I feel your pain. It doesn't First make, roll of the it, session. It, Don't worry. Uh, you gotta shake it off, big dog. Shake it off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, bro. So, uh, okay, Akama, 
as you are looking around and you guys are discussing this is this issue, you realize very quickly one very important factor. The entire facility that you can see from your vantage point and hear around you, everything seems completely calm. And you feel like if there was a real problem with Ren and that being that had leveled the, the weapon at you, if something had really gone wrong, security would have been in an uproar. There would have been, you know, all kinds of shit going on. You would guess that whatever happened pretty much diffused as soon as you guys weren't in in the in the scenario anymore um so in that sense you do get a pretty good sense that your your friend is okay your companion is actually fine and is just kind of going on with whatever he was doing so all right we so ymir so, yep. ymir Ymir notices none of these details as his mind no, of is course not. in, in a completely different kind of realm. So uh, I look at Ymir and I see that he's staring up into the sky and I start snapping my fingers like, hey, 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 wake up. <laughs> Talking to you. Ymir blinks twice, just kind of still lost in his own thoughts and, uh, the feeling that he's still fighting internally this place with its energy uh you you said it was palpable so he can feel it uh it's doing a lot to reset his anguish and anxiety and everything he was feeling being in that demonic realm he can almost smell it on the the wind uh the aura and that pleases him and he sort of pats Wotek twice and walks uh, along with the comma with the group towards okay. the group uh, All right. underneath underneath the archway if I can underneath the archway Ymir looks up and I would like to study that face just in passing the intricacies if that archway has all the inset gemstones and all that kind of stuff. Ymir, just in passing, would like to admire the um, craftsmanship and see if he can recognize anything with it or at least show appreciation for it. So as as you guys are walking forward, um, you realize that you're actually being led around to the left uh, of mm -hmm. the on the exterior of that chapel. And you see that this kind of uh, alleyway between the two buildings um, is relatively open and ornately adorned. Um, there's lots mm -hmm. of kind of marble, uh, small statues, as well as, you know, um, benches and, and uh, little tables set up, all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, gardening features and uh, even some uh, water features. Um, so lots of nice little touches and things that make it look um, very opulent. But for the most part, you're not really noticing any kind of uh, any features reminiscent of ancient Greece, uh, anything Roman. Uh, for the most part, um, it's exclusively uh, in the traditional kind of uh, Catholic uh, I guess in in that way there are a few Roman features, but in the traditional kind of Catholic uh, sense of a religious uh, uh, building and courtyard, um, mm -hmm. this place looks completely in line with what you've heard of some of the older structures that remain in your native Russia um, mm -hmm. from uh, the days of Roman Catholicism being like the pre the the dominant and Russian religion. Orthodox mm -hmm. exactly Russian North yep. and and mm -hmm. with the features being pretty much interchangeable you're you completely you know you, you completely see the parallel here and you also know that in your dealings um, with the more quote-unquote civilized uh, communities of humans and other species uh, in your native lands uh, that the people that ascribe to this religious belief, for the most part, although there are, you know, definitely uh, wicked individuals in every group, uh, for the most mm -hmm. part, they were honorable and seemed 
primarily to be concerned with the concept of charity and uh, sp- compassionate interaction with other living beings. And in that sense, you you your people had a a, a healthy respect, we'll say, um, mm-hmm. for that organization. Understood. Um, Understood. And you also notice that inside there appears to be some kind of ceremony going as you guys kind of round the corner a little more. Um, there appears to be some kind of ceremony going on where although the weather is relatively cool um, and you're actually starting to feel uh, small light um, uh, taps of a kind of slush like rain that's right on the verge between snow Uh, and liquid water. Um, You guys are seeing that there's a a priestly figure that appears to be holding a small newborn baby uh, in his arms very, very gently and and carefully and thoughtfully. Um, He's surrounded by two what look to be um, some kind of priestly figures while the central figure holding the baby appears to be some kind of religious authority, um, adorned in much more uh, ornate garb, um, even with uh, some gold trim and, and uh, gold accoutrements uh, and adornments uh, evidenced by the long kind of flowing uh, parchment-like litanies that are attached with a couple of strange wax-like seals in places on his shoulders uh, and collar. Um, you notice that some of these aspects seem traditional from both of your understandings of this uh, particular uh, facet of religious belief, but some are definitely different. Um, and as you watch, your uh, perspective shifts as you go around the corner and around the outside of the building, um, and quickly you lose sight of the priestly figure holding the baby. Um, but you do hear a soft um, kind of clicking sound as the large uh, reinforced oaken doors um, with studs and bars to brace against intrusion uh, slowly uh, uh, squeak shut um, and you hear the uh, reinforced um, slat slide across on the inside securing the edifice from uh, intrusion any further. Um, you don't know if the door was closed because if the doors were closed because you guys were just watching or if whatever this ritual is had just reached a point where privacy is now mandatory and mandated by custom and practice. Um, so with that, you both you both do have a strange feeling though. That looked there was nothing about it that worried you or even looked off but both of you took notice and it's sticking in your minds for some reason um you round the corner uh completely and are now in the alleyway heading back behind that structure and as you do pilgrim and harmony slow just a bit and uh harmony says to both of you over her shoulder um, will be there momentarily. I would ask that you both observe uh, a calm demeanor uh, in the presence of what you are about to see. Um, She says, um, this is something that tourists and outsiders are never invited to. So please count yourselves lucky and show the proper reverence. With this, she just gives you a slight nod of the head uh, to to express that this is not so much a request as uh, the uh, the formal um, declaring of what is expected of you. Okay, mm-hmm. um, you guys continue moving forward uh, down the path, and quickly the uh, cobblestones um, and trappings of Uh, all of these buildings fade away and you guys are out on uh, a kind of open field um, with some trees and uh, hills in the distance. Now, as soon as you round that corner, 
uh, and the way opens up in front of you, you realize that what you took before to be perhaps the power and resonant uh, energy of this place to be radiating perhaps from the, the structure itself, you now realize that indeed it's the area that you find yourself in. That the area that you're in itself seems to be infused with a kind of mystical and holy light, a kind of life and strength that overflows from the surrounding landscape into any living being uh, that enters the area. Um, this translates into strange uh, optical effects, um, similar to what you've heard of as the Northern Lights, which are actually a very common phenomenon throughout the world now in Rift's Earth. Um, you notice that the area is alive with the sounds of nature, um, and that there is a kind of low humming that can be perceived only in the back of your jaw, in the very root uh, of your furthest uh, rear molars, uh, something that tickles at the eardrums just slightly enough that you can't quite forget it's there and makes your scalp set on edge um, just from the, the sheer kind of static electricity uh, bouncing around from every atom uh, uh, to the one next to it in the environment. Um, as you look around, you also notice that some of the plants uh, and objects, you know, rocks, uh, etc., uh, et they actually seem to have small arcs of blue energy uh, and purple uh, kind of plasma uh, tickling from one to the other <clears throat> where the, the tip of one a blade of grass will exchange a small charge and an arc of energy uh, with the rock down uh, at its base. Um, none of this seems to be damaging or destructive. It just seems that this place is literally overflowing with some kind of natural power. Um, as you guys continue walking forward, you notice that this effect is enhanced as you step out into the open uh, kind of plane. Um, and every footfall upon uh, this uh, environment almost feels like you're stepping on a uh, live electric plate of some kind that's discharging a small amount of voltage into you with each step. Um, As we're walking along, can Ymir pick up one of the stones you mentioned and study it? Maybe he won't put it in his pack, but can he use uh, his expertise in gemology to possibly study it? And maybe he's seen it before. Absolutely. Like it. You reach down and as you pick up a small rock that doesn't seem attached to anything, something about this place makes you feel like it would be a violation to simply stick a hand down and take out a palm full of grass and living dirt. Um, some, some instinct tells you this isn't really uh, the place for that kind of behavior. And as you pick up just a small, loose piece of rock, um, you, you, really, uh, uh, you really expect there to be some kind of uh, difference. Go ahead and give me... Uh, a roll on that, uh, is it gemology or I thought we had another one for you. Like, was it mining? One of your skills has a bunch of different applications. It was like precious metals. I think, mm. let me take a quick yeah. look here. Gemology, metalwork and forge. Armorer, recognize weapon quality. And no, you know, Ymir isn't trying to just put the rock in his pack. He is just picking yeah, it up, putting absolutely. it in his palm to study it. Okay. Just I just mean you're clear. you're not you're not acting like a backhoe with your giant yeah, hand no, and just like scooping no, out a de de definitely not. <laughs> it's like no. a gopher comes up with it and shit. Yeah. No, All right. Fuck um uh, prospecting, possibly. That might have been it. I was just looking yep. at this the other day. Character can recognize and evaluate precious and semi-precious metals. That's the one. 
That's natural the one. or an appearance. Right, so cool. go ahead and hit that, and your bonus is going to be 30. 30? Okay. That modifier, 30. 30. Submit. Nice. Okay. Excellent. Um, okay, so as you pick this uh, small... Uh, kind of slab of rock up the small chip of rock mm -hmm. uh, you start looking it over and you notice that it looks completely normal um, the energy seems to dissipate as soon as you lift it up from the ground now although the stone looks normal what you do notice is that the energy signature that was visible, giving it a, a slight, almost sparkling kind of silver sheen. Uh, as soon as you made contact and lifted it, the energy seemed to dissipate harmlessly and quickly right into your hand. Um, and as soon as it did, the rock now looks completely normal. Um, it reflects light exactly as you would expect and has no other um, really interesting features about it out of the ordinary. Um, well, given that Ymir notices it, take no takes note of what just happened, and slowly and gingerly places the rock down almost exactly where he found it, uh, just taking note of what's around him. He's feeling very comfortable in this situation, and he's looking at Wotek like, look, look at what, um look at what Aku's realm can look like. This is the the reach of Aku, the bear god, and this reminds him of the great forest realm that Aku rules over alongside Badar, where they were created. And he he's feeling at peace as he and walks. Right as you say this, you see the, the northern light effect, the uh, Aurora Borealis effect. You see it for just a second, have a kind of harmony uh, sweep across the effect that you're witnessing where a kind of confused jumble of diffused light for just a moment it almost comes into perfect clarity where it looks almost like a, a microscope that's finally turned that last bit into into perfect focus and instead of a blur of light on the horizon and in the sky a beautiful, uh, intricate uh, pattern of strange geometric shapes uh, and symbols for just a split second comes into perfect view and it, and it covers the sky. It, it fills your perceptions and is one of the most beautiful sights either of you have ever beheld. The, the range of colors extends well beyond any that you've, that either of you have actually seen before. Um, and this effect is something very different than either of you have experienced. Um, a comma on a few different worlds in other dimensions, you've witnessed some amazing sights in the skies. Um, and you've heard of, of thousands of examples of things that we wouldn't, normally you know believe to even exist uh in our modern time but at this at this point you're convinced that um there's some kind of actual magical sigils or or pattern at work here and not just a natural phenomenon um with my extra sight can i see where this power is generating from um we're gonna say that that has faded if you want to recast, you're able to. Mm -hmm. A lot of shit to look through, huh? There you go. 
All right, so as you touch the tattoo uh, and uh, will a small expenditure of PPE energy into it, uh, it flares to life once again, um, and the small sigil kind of flashes in front of your forehead, uh, denoting that your inner third eye has awoken, and you're now seeing the truth behind the veil that the Give me sight perceives. beyond sight! Right. Right. The sword is big. All right, so as you, um, as you start looking around, uh, you are able to instantly perceive um, a kind of fabric or weave that seems to be making uh, a perfect thin um, kind of membrane over everything in the environment uh, around you. Um, each object seems to be coated in its own kind of micro lattice of, of webbing that seems to be these uh, kind of glimmering silver threads or strands. Um, they're so small that uh, to, uh, at, at first glance, it almost seems like the objects are just each glowing, a slightly different hue than each other. Um, but as you really focus your perception in, you see that um, it, it really is like a small living net of energy is wrapping each individual object around you. Um, as you look up into the sky, you see that there are what appear to be almost an infinite number of those uh, threads, but on a smaller scale that seem to be interweaving up into the up into the air and into the night sky, connecting to all of those different symbols um, and sigils uh, that are uh, 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 kind of taking up the entire uh, skyline. Um, and those, in turn, are wrapped to each other individual object. And the effect is basically just a hue of this energy filling your perceptions, uh, seeming to indicate that something about these sigils is connected to everything in this entire area. Um, beyond that, it's a bit too much information to really make uh, good estimates on, on any other, you know, really conclusive facts. Um, this is something that you probably could stay here for days, if not weeks, studying and still have way more questions than answers about what you're actually seeing. Um, okay. You also notice though, one final thing you notice is that the way that these strands and this kind of aura seems to be interacting with, uh, the living creatures around you. Um, everybody has these, st these strands kind of attaching to the surface of their body and making one of those kind of webs uh, that you're seeing on everything else. Uh, on living creatures, it seems to be a little brighter, though. It seems like it interacts more positively and energetically with anything that's actually alive. You're seeing this demonstrated from the plant life uh, in contrast to, like, stone, okay? Uh, and as you're seeing this, you look over to Pilgrim, and you notice that Pilgrim... Uh, does not have this kind of web-like structure across her form. Uh, in fact, Pilgrim seems to simply look exactly as she always has to you, um, but that thin, strange kind of heat shimmer that appears around her that distorts uh, the uh, visual spectrum around her form when she's absorbing energy, you're seeing that subtly at play now, and where everything else is covered in this webbing and, and energy, um, it seems to simply disappear when it, gets, when it gets to within a couple of inches of her body. Um, just, I mean, as, as, as cleanly as steam put into a room warm enough not to support it anymore, um, where there's almost like a straight line where it just ends around her. Um, you would guess that she is absorbing it. You're, you're not entirely sure, but that's what you would estimate. Um, okay. With that being so what, said, uh, go ahead. I go was ahead. just, 
I was just going to ask, does Wotek see anything similar to what Akama sees given his third uh, eye perspective, the way uh, Wotek can sense spirits and natural energy? Does he see any of these threads as or you, the way they connect to the symbol in the sky? As you look back, um, you see... Uh, you look over to see what your companion, uh, how he's reacting. And as you look back, you instantly realize that he stopped right where the cobblestone stopped. You guys have only advanced a few yards forward, um, but you now see that he completely stopped forward motion uh, and is standing almost at the ready and tense. Um, he's looking forward with a very stern uh, and gruff expression uh, on his uh, on his features and his jowls, uh, and he appears to be breathing a bit more rapidly and and ruggedly than would be necessitated by the little bit that you guys have been doing. Um, something definitely has him maybe not spooked, but there is there's a strong reason why he's not moving forward right now. Um, and you're a little puddle, puzzled at this because you're not sure what it could be. Confused by this, Ymir walks over to Wotek, pats him twice on the head and the side of the neck, and does his uh, traditional calming down sort of mantra with Wotek where he goes, Isa, Isa, and then he whispers to him, what do you sense? What do you feel? Um, as he looks forward around uh, from side to side at the very edge of the cobblestones uh, and the stonework, um, he kind of lowers his head a bit and his eyes kind of droop. Um, you're not sure it precisely what's going through his head, but you get a strong sense of guilt. Um, and as he raises his head again for just a, a, a heartbeat, um, you see him lean his massive, huge frame forward slightly and makes the top of his, uh, of his head um, lean forward just over the edge of the cobblestones. As he does, you now see that from this side of things, there's a perfect smooth wall of those strands of energy uh, in front of you uh, that seem to, that at where everything, that light that you're seeing, it seems to make a, a completely clean plane uh, right at the edge of the cobblestone separating this kind of natural little preserve. And when Wotek leans forward and touches that shimmering light plane with the top of, with the crown of his head, you instantly hear a loud cracking sizzling noise, uh, like the discharge of lightning, uh, or a very powerful electrical field along with a, uh, sharp, uh, sizzling and instantly you smell burning hair and flesh as you see a pretty nasty wound right away melt open on the top of his head uh, sizzling through the top few layers of skin uh, and leaving a dinner plate size wound as he quickly withdraws from the pain um, you see that it's burned as cleanly as like a laser polisher that's used to remove rust would have done that kind of precision and uh, power uh, is staggering when you consider that this this bear is a enormous multi-ton uh, quasi magical beast with mega damage flesh like tank armor. Um, each hair it would easily be able to penetrate through a human's body all the way up to full length just because it's it's every piece of this creature is, is as solid as a tank. Um, and yet the wound was nearly instantaneously created. Um, he leans back, uh, kind of plopping back on his ass, 
uh, and right away starts kind of uh, kind of shaking his head side to side as little wisps of smoke uh, rise from the fresh kind of layer of blood and and kind of viscera be- beneath uh, the flesh that is now gone. Um, you do notice, however, that this wound probably didn't do much to your companion. He's he's probably fine, and you know he heals incredibly quickly. Um, but this was his way of basically showing you why he can't go forward. Okay, makes sense. Um, as he sits back and kind of just waits for you to return, uh, what would you like to do? You be here places of uh, uh, his big mitt, his big giant mitt underneath Wotek's chin and starts just gently rubbing him and patting him on the back and uh, he leans over and said looks like you cannot enter brother is this some sort of what? what is this magic that can in prison you like this is this a cage that we're walking into i uh stop walking and i uh look back toward them two chanting amongst each other and i'm like basically looking back at uh harmony and then looking at ymir just uh back and forth so to say okay uh, uh as, as you as you're looking back and forth at them, you're getting the general gist of of what essentially just happened. You heard kind of the loud crack and sizzle of lightning uh, a moment ago, and um, you can definitely tell what, what just happened. So, I got excited when I heard the lightning splat, and uh, I instantly reach in my bag and pull out my camera to see if I could catch uh, another lightning bolt. And then I peer over at uh, Wotek and it's uh, in this parent wound. Uh, and I, a, I just want to take a picture oh, of it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take a picture of that and then the surrounding area. Okay. All right. You get some photos. You get some photos. You can make a note of those two items and. Uh, okay, uh, so Ymir, what do you want to, what do you want to be doing? I I asked Wotek a a question, and I'm waiting for his response. I asked him, wh- why has this happened? Is this some sort of prison that we're walking into? That's right. Okay, um, at this, he just lets out kind of a low grumble, and it's more of a, a grumble of almost like acquiescence, like no, it's because of me there's something there's something uh, about me why uh, i can't move uh, forward oh uh, i and ymir can sense this okay. yes absolutely right. there's that kind of underpinning note of guilt so right 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 ymir pats his companion on the back his shield brother on the back and goes i'll go along ahead brother you stay safe and heal well we will meet back soon Remember, we push forward onto our answers. This was our oath after what happened. Yes. And he just he just kind of bobs his head once, kind of solemnly. Okay. Let's out a little right. grumble. Well, then given that he pats his companion his shield brother twice on the back once again and catches up with the group confused because of what he just saw and how um, this sort of magical energy or energy affected mega damage creatures, especially one as sturdy as Wotek is. Uh, It gives Ymir great pause, but he's still trying to go with the plan he he's still pushing forward regardless he's already come this far and he gave his word that he would be calm and respect everything going forward so he's just getting back on track okay all right okay so you start heading back uh down the path 
a comma, you're doing what? Uh, taking pictures, but still keeping an eye on Harmony so they don't lose. I don't lose sight of them. Okay. Um, as you as you start walking forward, um, and you guys kind of start regrouping, you begin noticing that the device you use as a camera you're starting to see it flicker and almost look like it's like having some kind of problem with uh with the uh actual like operating system um you're seeing some weird glitches start flash across the screen um and the controls are becoming less and less responsive um you've actually never seen this device act this way before um Let's see. I holster it. Oh, yeah. Ymir catches up with Harmony as Akama holsters his uh, malfunctioning camera and just looks at her with uh, concern and sort of a halfway stern look just to to be like, this is a serious question I'm asking you. Uh, looks at her and goes, will Wotek be safe? While we continue uh, forward, I worry for him. Um, and as you ask this, uh, she just looks over at you very calmly and just gives you a very slight nod uh, with her eyes kind of like half closed. She just seems almost at peace and like she's in a meditative state right now um, and just gives you a completely kind of open... Uh, you know, simple response of a nod of the head. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, okay. You guys begin moving forward. Did you want to go ahead and, and put your camera away a comma or do you want to keep trying to use it? Yeah, I'm putting it away. Okay. So as you store it, you notice that as you kind of shut it down, it doesn't seem to want to shut down and you wind up having to, kind of fiddle with it for an extra couple of moments finally it, it does seem to you're a little worried you'd like to check it later and make sure that your pictures are that everything still seems good um okay. all right so you get that stored and as you're moving further into the field you're noticing that this kind of web work with your enhanced sight is getting thicker and thicker um, and pretty soon it gets to the point where you're thinking you should probably start kind of tuning out this enhanced vision a bit because everything is starting to get just washed with color. It's, it's almost like a rain so heavy that you, you can't even see your hand in front of your face. Um, and so you're starting to have a little bit of trouble actually discerning like what's going on in front of you because of just the, the sheer magnitude of the light effect going on. Um, as you're trying to deal with this, again, you guys have only moved forward probably, you know, 30, 30 yards or so. Um, but you very quickly come out to a field uh, that's completely open in front of you that seems to be what this little road or path that you were on is terminating at. Um, this field has, uh, some trees and things off in the distance. There's some forest further on, but as you begin to walk forward onto this kind of open field, the grass has been cut very low. Um, and most of the plant life has been kind of removed back out to a pretty, pretty decent distance. Um, at least, you know, a hundred feet in all directions. So a pretty decent open area. Um, you notice that um, right away, a comma, the light effect becomes easier for you to deal with uh, without you actually having to adjust anything. And as you kind of open your eyes again, uh, you know, all the way and start really taking in what's in front of you, um, you notice that a lot of the light effect has dimmed right as you've gotten to the edge of this field. Almost, almost like the field doesn't really have that energy uh, permeating through it. You can still see it up in the sigils in the sky, 
uh, in the framework, which again, it's, be, it's, it's blurry. It kind of comes in and out of focus rarely. And for the most part, you're still seeing just kind of like a wash of colors, but you still see those patterns and sigils kind of behind the general, uh, appearance that you're seeing on the surface. Um, as you guys, uh, proceed right to the edge of the field, um, Akama, you look over at Pilgrim and you know that you notice that Pilgrim is actually starting to grow, glow. Um, and as she steps forward into the field, uh, and out of that kind of web of energy everywhere around you, um, you notice that that kind of shimmer around here, her instantly grows by many orders of magnitude where she almost seems like she's in a large, um, maybe 10 foot across bubble. Um, of that kind of kind of heat distortion on a hot highway kind of shimmering effect. Um, this is much larger than you've seen that that effect in the past. Um, even when she was absorbing uh, what appeared to be that large um, golem like giant out on the open waters uh, when you guys first arrived. Um, those large PPE batteries on its back. Uh, still didn't elicit this this level of that field. Now, as you're watching her, you see that the glow is actually coming from her her actual skin. Um, she does have that um, that kind of uh, uh, almost like a uh, almost like a utility outfit on um, that was, I believe, red and uh, prim primarily yellow. Uh, and it just looked like a worker's, almost like a complete overalls that would be suitable for a workout, like in the waist. Gotcha, um, gotcha. She had taken the top and tied it around her waist, I believe. And um, the portion of her that you could see now, she's actually got what essentially is like a tank top on that's made of some kind of like silky kind of gossamer material that's almost see-through. Um, and the illumination coming from her form is coming directly out of her skin. Um, as she continues stepping into the field, she's beginning to glow brighter and brighter. And from what you can tell with your enhanced senses, um, this is a, a purely um, non-magical uh, kind of energy that you're witnessing. It doesn't seem to have any of the normal signatures that you would associate with almost any form of magic. Um, this is puzzling to you because you feel certain that the energy around you and the, the fields around you that you've been witnessing, those definitely were magic. Um, she continues stepping forward and Ymir, uh, you are now at the very edge of the field as well. You're both standing right there at the edge um, and Harmony actually stops right at the edge of the field uh, with you guys and actually holds an arm out to her side kind of denoting, wait here. Um, do you both wanna go ahead and, and stay at her side at the edge of the field or do you wanna continue walking in? No, uh, Ymir will respect her wishes and stand exactly where her, uh, where she said to hold. Okay. I sit down. All right. I sit down in a kneeling position where I resting my bottom on my heels, and my knees okay. are contacting the ground. All right. Um, you go ahead and. Uh, sit down, you get yourself situated, and as you're watching forward, Ymir, you, you're you're standing there, there's nothing in particular you're wanting to... Nope. Okay. Just following Harmony's order, noticing her holding her hand out. He's trying to be very respectful of what Harmony says because of what she said earlier. So yeah, he's just dead even, just standing there. Okay. 
Um, as you guys are watching, uh, Pilgrim is slowly continuing to walk into the center of the field. And as Ymir, as you're watching, I'm sorry, yeah. So as Harmony's standing next to you guys and Pilgrim's continue, continuing to walk into the center of the field, um, you're noticing that uh, the sky around you guys has grown much, much darker. Um, the light above is starting to fade out and it's now starting to look like a deep, um, beautiful uh, kind of uh, starscape that one would see out in the middle of the wilderness. Uh, where the intrusive lights of civilization can't blanket out the beauty of the stars. Um, you guys uh, are gazing around and you're noticing that uh, the uh, effect of the kind of light and the halo in the sky that you were seeing before, it seems to actually be dissipating further and further away uh, from the edge of the, uh, of the clearing and you're now noticing that the area around you is starting to get darker as well, further and further back. Um, quickly, you both notice that what essentially has happened is that the darkness of the field has now uh, kind of eclipsed the center of this entire area. And as you're looking, you see that there's now almost like a uh, only five or six foot thick um kind of membrane or wall of that energy still surrounding the very outer perimeter.